Hey everybody, how are y'all doing? Good, all good? Welcome to the Herbert Family University Lecture Series. My name is Robert Crosno, and I'm the Associate Dean of the College of Liberal Arts, a professor of sociology and psychology, and a member of the Signature Course Advisory Committee. I've personally presented this lecture series twice in the last few years, and I can tell you it was an incredible experience, and I know that today's lecture will be even more so for everybody involved. What matters to black Austinites? That's the question being asked in a new podcast series from KUT and KTU, KUTX Studios. Black Austin Matters highlights the black community and black culture in Central Texas. Each month, the hosts talk with other black Austinites about their perspectives on what's happening in their city. Each week, they speak with the well-known and not so well-known in Austin's black community to find out what matters to them. We're so fortunate to have the host of Black Austin Matters on stage with me this evening. And I'm going to introduce you to them. And before I do that, I'm just going to say I have the pleasure of being both colleague and friends with both of our presenters, so the honor is all mine tonight. First off, Richard J. Reddick is a professor of higher education leadership in the College of Education, where he teaches graduate courses on the history of higher education, multicultural modes of mentoring, and social and cultural context of education. He also teaches in the Signature Course Program, and like, with, like me, he serves as a member of the Signature Course Advisory Committee. Dr. Reddick was recently appointed Senior Vice Provost for Curriculum and Enrollment and Dean of the School of Undergraduate Studies. Now, fun fact, several years, several decades ago, wow. Dr. Reddick and I were first-year students at the University of Texas, just like you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And I know that his experience as a first year student here informs profoundly everything he does in his leadership on campus. And that is why, plus the fact that he's a super fun guy, he is perfect for this new leadership position. Second off, Lisa B. Thompson is the Patent Professor of African and African Diaspora Studies and an advisor to the Dean for Faculty Mentoring and Support in the College of Liberal Arts. She also has faculty appointments in English, Women and Gender Studies in the College of Liberal Arts, and Theater and Dance in the College of Fine Arts. Dr. Tom Thompson is an artist scholar who teaches classes on performing blackness, Toni Morrison and August Wilson, black film, the black middle class, staging black feminism, and writing for black performance. And in working closely with her over the last year, I can tell you I have learned a few things. She is wise, she is witty, she is warm, and she is wonderful. There is only one Lisa B. Thompson, and you are gonna meet her tonight. Now, in order to give our speakers as much time as possible, we will have not have a live question and answer session tonight. Instead, we're asking you to send in your questions using the QR code you see on the screens. If you didn't scan them yet, we have them posted in the lobby. Later this week, Dr. Reddick and Thompson will answer your questions, and the School of Undergraduate Studies will post the Q&A on the Herbert Family University Lecture Series website next week. Again, it's my pleasure to welcome you to this event. At this time, I'm going to turn it over to my friends and colleagues, Dr. Rich Reddick and Dr. Lisa B. Thompson. Thank you, Bob. That was so nice, Rob. Check out the mail. Yeah, exactly. How are y'all doing? This is great. How are y'all doing? Okay. We're going to have fun tonight. This is going to be a fun experience because we have fun together. Too much fun. Too much fun together. So we're going to try to stay on topic, on task. But we really want to sit here and share with you our experience crafting, uh, with lots of help, uh, this podcast that's a love letter to Austin's black community, um, and kind of helping you understand that the possibilities are endless. Um, but you know, Lisa, you wanted to say something about your bio, I think. About yes, I, I love my bio. It's wonderful, black artist, scholar, and yada yada yada. But I also am proud mother of a genius who is very kind, and um, he's a level three right now, and made it home on bus, so I'm happy that I did pick up. <laughs> so, I mean, we'll see this, so. Exactly. Shout out to him. Yes. And, and to, to Carl and Captain Mikey. 
Um, so let's kind of uh, get into it. And one of the things that's really fun about this experience, you might think, oh, these professors have fancy titles and they do all these great things. We're like 10-year-olds. And so when we saw this in the Moody College of Communications, we freaked out. Like, look, that's us. Yo, that's us. That, that, that really is me. You know, little, 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 he's coming up on the screen. You're like walking by like, wait a minute. Um, and that's when we knew that this was a real thing. This is something we was working on for over a year. And um, it was, had been done in the studio. It was going to be out in the world. And it just was a nice moment for us, I think. Yeah, I mean, it's up there, you know, register for classes, you know, important things in Austin, and that's us. And so it really was amazing to think about the genesis of this whole thing, which we're going to talk about. So let's start by talking about how the idea came up. So one thing you should know, at least about me and about Lisa as well, is that I am kind of a native Austinite. And I say I'm kind of because my dad was in the military. Uh, I moved around a lot, but went for a little while. I moved here in ninth grade. So I went to high school here in Austin. So I'm considered, by Austin standards, to be an Austinite. Dr. Thompson, on the other hand, moved here 11? 10 years ago in July. Uh, this is my fourth state that I've lived in, third time zone. And I have grown to really, really love Texas. And I'm made in California. Um, and I'm very vocal, very protective of, of Texas. And, uh, and so it's been a wonderful place for me. I can't believe what's been happening in the, in the 10 years. And the other thing that's really interesting is that we connected, I think, fairly soon after you got to town. Yes. You, you're one of your fraternity brothers. You know, it's Myron. Myron, my, my college, my college, um, your home girls from grad school. And somehow we got on the subject of birthdays. Yeah. We had the same birthday. Different year. Yeah. I was more of the fine wine Ooh, yeah. variety. So, <laughs> any Tauruses in the crowd? Taurus, come on. Okay. Wow. wow. <laughs> all right, I see some. All right. Any May 17th babies in the house? Oh! oh. All right. All right. Yes. That's, That's us. us. We're birthday, multiple birth people. And do you know what else happened on May 17th? 54. 1954, we were not alive then. Neither, neither one of us. That was the anniversary of the, the ruling for Brown versus Board of Education. And I think that ruling really shaped my opportunities as a um, student and as a scholar, and it's been something that's been foundational for my life. And it's, it's nice, nice to have that. We call ourselves the Brown babies. Literally. <laughs> uh, yeah, and, and I, I think, you know, I've always thought of myself as being somebody that that motivated me in so many ways. And growing up in Austin motivated me as well because you think about racial equity issues, you might want to study Austin, Texas, right? So um, at least in my mind, I always had this mindset that I wanted to study issues of equity, study the experiences of black people and BIPOC folks and people of color generally. So that was kind of a vibe we had. We'd go to conferences across the country, see each other, hang out. You're supposed to hang out with other people. You're supposed to get the conferences. We hang with each other. So we always knew we were going to have a project to work on at some point in time. And but the project ended up being talking about our hometown, adopted hometown, native hometown. And the discourse about Austin, and, and those of you who have moved to Austin might be familiar with some of these, uh, some of these uh, headlines, has always sort of questioned sort of the presence of black folks in the community. Yeah, and for me, coming here 10 years ago, I'm like, well, that's interesting, because I've seen black folks at the grocery store, I've seen black folks at the barbershop, <laughs> yes. Uh, and then thinking about the way in which people would talk to me outside of Austin about, oh my God, how are you guys doing out there? I heard the news, it was in the New York Times, it was in this newspaper, it was in the Wall Street Journal. And I'm like, well, that's a narrative. So it's always been kind of uh, something on my mind, wondering about why that's always the, was at the foreground of the discussion about black people right now. And, you know, to shout out our friends, Eric Tang and yeah. people like Shonda Sanders, these are our friends and these are yeah. esteemed scholars. And they're making very valid and important points. But the issue to us is about telling the entire story, right? So we wanted to also tell stories of joy and excitement. And that's something we've always talked about, how much we enjoy living here. I've raised two kids in Austin. Um, I'm from the southeast side of town. They were born in the northwest side of town. We still get along despite that. 
but um, it's, it's always been like a thing, thing about living in Austin. And what a great place it is, in my opinion, to raise uh, uh, young people. You have to have your head in the swivel. Yeah. You got to know what's up. But it's a great place, in my opinion, to live. And it has its challenges, for sure. But certainly something we wanted to talk about. We always talk about it just the casual. We get together and say, like, hey, how are you doing? What's up with them? You know, we've had these conversations. And so that was kind of already happening with us. Yeah, and I got to throw a shout out to Northeast. The, 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 the two, two three, anybody out here that lives in Minnesota? Yeah, the two, two three. three. So that's, oh, oh, oh you know that? Oh, yeah. Four, four, even for the four, four, Dove Springs? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta work, work on that, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. All right. So, so, the, the, so, so be, beyond the narrative and the headlines, we thought, hopefully we'll see something, we would have a conversation with the world that gives folks a broader sense of our community. So what do we have here? Yeah, yeah, this happened. So let's, let's go, go back to uh, June 2020. Um, I'm, I'm sure many of you remember this, but that was when George Floyd was murdered. Um, I, I think all of us felt profound shock, horror, loss, anger, sorrow, all the things. And uh, I'm usually a person who opines on issues all the time in the media. I'm happy to talk about these things. I didn't say anything for about a week. I just couldn't. And I remember having a conversation with my son, Carl. Carl was 14, now he was 13 back then. And, you know, I said to him, hey, this just happened, you know, how do you feel? And he started talking to me in a way that kind of shook me because at the age of 13, he could talk about black deaths because he's seen so many of them. Philando Castile, you know, Brianna, he's seen so many of them already. He had like a vocabulary about it. And then I was just like, what is going on in the world? And, and my family was different. My son didn't want to talk about it. I think, I think that, that yeah, one, having a parent who works in black studies, you're like, okay, here she goes again. Black um, stuff. But also, it was jarring for both of us is having our sons in this period grow into, from cute little boys to people that someone might want to extinguish with impunity. Yeah. And that was really um, a very, very heavy thing to be carrying and trying to navigate during the pandemic. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and. You know, we, we got, got involved in all kinds of things. We did marches. We got involved in the movement, how we could. But then one day, out of the blue, the folks in Austin Justice Coalition and the Arts Co community got together and painted Black Austin Matters on Congress Avenue. And that was on June 16th. Uh, so not that far after the other thing had happened, probably about two weeks after everything had happened. And I had, you know, Dr. Thompson's very plugged into the arts community. I'm not so much, so I'm like, I didn't know this was happening. And so I decided to go on social media. It was summertime, people aren't around, so I'm like, let me jump onto Twitter and just drop some thoughts. So I sent this, this tweet out. And the thought was, I copied all these people I knew who were doing equity work and saying, yeah, let's have a conversation, you know, let's just talk about this. And I got one response. Yeah, so, yeah, so he's out here tagging people put them on Front Street, and I said, I have an idea, but let me just wait for the day to go by. Sometimes you want to just sit with things. And I'm going to give you advice as young people. Um, sometimes it's important to jump immediately, and sometimes you want to just sit and see what's going to happen. And the day went on, and notice no one responded, and I said, just do it. So I decided to respond, and I tagged KUT because I didn't want it to be a one-off thing where well, we get together and have this, the blacks are going through such a difficult time, let's talk about it, what's happening to them. That I really would want it to have a sustained conversation where we're not in crisis and then being asked to perform in our grief, in our trauma, in our sadness, but instead have us be part of every conversation. Believe it or not, there are black people in Austin who have an opinion about what's going on in Ukraine. You have an opinion about what's going on with the gas prices, about everything, not just the horrors of racial violence. So that tag was not, and so, you know, so I tagged KUT, hoping to have a public conversation, but I didn't say the bridge until later was, uh, this is not going to be one off. And, and this is the genius of Lisa B. Thompson, because she's like, don't say anything in this conversation. Because I want to shout out, at KUT is actually uh, managed by Matt Largy. Matt's a good friend of ours now. Yeah. And so what I don't have on this is a response. Matt said, hey, let's talk. Yeah. And so he emailed us. He emailed us. And Dr. Lucy Thompson said, Rich, don't say anything. I 
I got this. I tend, I tend to, to talk first and think afterwards. She thinks first and talks <laughs> afterwards. <laughs> so, and she made this idea, like, you know, I really think this should be something that's a sustained discussion. It doesn't just happen once. So I was like, we could do a show, and we talk about it, and that's all I had in my mind. She's like, no, 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 we could do this. And I'm like, I don't know how to do a show. She's like, no, do I. <laughs> but let's have this conversation. And we had this excellent conversation with Matt, and he was like, let's do this. Like, it was like no hesitation, no, let's do this. And that's when we started back in 2020. 2020, actually, yes. And getting with equipment and figuring out how to use it. And I am kind of a Luddite, so kind of, <laughs> how did it supposed to, did it sign on? Um, but it was important for us to take ownership of it and also to not just be um, those talking heads, but also to be producers kind of behind the scenes and helping to shape the arc of our season to kind of a sense of what we wanted to do. You know, as professors, uh, I think we operate in spaces of expertise, right? We're not often vulnerable, but we don't know how to podcast. We don't know how to hit the record on the button. Literally, <laughs> Matt gives us recorders and headphones. And I'm like, I walk in the house like, yo, what's going on today? Yeah, it's it's pandemic time, time too, by the right. way, so we can't be in the same place. My daughter's like, I see that, you can't touch this. It's very important, whatever it is. And so just the sense that we had this idea to start off in. And so... You're probably thinking, so you must have had your first episode about a week later. Mm, it took about a year. Yes. About a year. And at times we were frustrated in that process, but it actually ended up being a very good thing because it made us sort of, first of all, build out the infrastructure we needed. So we both have community connections because we've been in the community. We are professors at UT, but we live and operate and do work in Austin. So we're not unknown to people. And so to go out to people and say, we're starting this podcast, we'd love for you to be involved, it was like, okay, it's Lisa, it's Rich, okay, I might, you know, okay, maybe, you know, those kinds of things. We had to do that piece, first of all. We also had to build out a crew, and so we'll talk about that a little bit later on, but you don't just do a podcast, well, I guess you can, technology, y'all probably could, we could, but we needed people to help us with the idea. So to get that whole process in place took a little bit of time, and I'm really glad it did, because... What we ended up doing is having these incredible experiences. Yes. So in the upper left-hand corner, that's my high school classmate, Stephanie Lang, who is a comedian, curator, artist, uh, spoken word, performer. She does everything. And we, we will, both Lisa and I know her, and we're like, we would love for you to be part of this. And of course, because she knows us and loves us, she's like, I'm down. And also it's important for us to have people who are native Austinites all the way, like born and raised here and have generations here and also her work but was acclaimed um, who said black Austin passed and tries to make sure that it's not, it's not erased so we wanted to make sure that she was part of the first season. And I believe she's seven generations deep in Austin. When people tell you black folks aren't from Austin, talk to Stephanie. Seven generations deep. Yes. Upper right hand corner, that is where it all started. That is Dr. Exalton Delco, my fraternity brother. Uh, and just one of the Austin legends in civil rights. And we decided that when we start this project, we gotta go hard. We gotta go the first one. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta get the biggest, most important, most impactful folks we can get. And uh, Dr. Delco and his wife, William and Delco, are Austin legends. If you're from Austin, you've no doubt heard their names. You might have been by the Delco Center out there in Northeast Austin. So, and I've, I actually have known the Delcos, at least in passing, since I was in high school. But I know their daughters. And so we reached out and said, we would love to talk to your folks about this. And of course, we were incredibly respectful and making sure that to be comfortable with them during the pandemic. Yes. And I'm like, y'all need to come on through. <laughs> I mean, Mrs. Delco was like, well, that would be great. And, and Dr. Delco was like, yes, come to the house. And I think I had booked an hour in my calendar to go visit. Yes. We, we were, were there for like, like three and a half hours. Yes. Black senior, like, oh, baby, come on, sit down and relax. And the thing which struck me is I never, I saw the buildings and heard of their legends, but I didn't know who they were. Well, that's not true. I didn't know I didn't. I, I knew them. I go to the YMCA. I, I want people to speak to everybody. And so we would chat and stuff. And I'm like, oh, my God, that's them. Because they go to the pool all the time. And it was pretty amazing to, to have the moment. Made me realize, made me realize that, in fact, what we are doing is not, having 
conversations with important black Austin Austinites, but we're talking to our neighbors, to all of our neighbors, who happen to be African Americans in Austin. Yeah, and, and I think the thing that's really amazing about this is that, you know, I'm a, a phenomenologist in my training, research training, so I interview people all the time. This is a different kind of interviewing. Um, you're really trying to get people to tell you stories. And when we got this couple together who had been married for 67 years at the time, so I guess it's 68 nine years. Nine, 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 yeah. Yeah. They are like a comedy duo. I kid you not. <laughs> Mrs. Delco, Delco would say something, Dr. Delco would try to say something, she's like, no, no, that's not how it happened. This is what actually happened. We <laughs> learned about their upbringing, how they first got together, the work they did together as a couple, and the fact that, in a lot of ways, her political career, because Mrs. Delco is the first black woman on the city council, first black woman on the uh, school board, uh, first black, I don't know if she's the first black African American representative for the district, but Maybe, uh, just a trailblazer in every sense of the word. Absolutely. And then you find out that, you know, well, well, my, my husband, husband was being doted on by, by my mother and his mother. <laughs> so I had to find some way to stand out, and that's how I did it. And it's just amazing to hear her talk about sitting at the kitchen table with political candidates and helping them put together the Women's Guide for voters and all those different like that. But uh, it was just, I can't explain how we walked out feeling like this is it. Yes. We have struck pay dirt. We got to do this. Yes. And if you were before kind of like, well, we'll see how it goes, we're like, no, 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 we got to do this. We had no idea that we were recording history, really, yeah. and archiving Black Austin in this moment for the preacher. And, and right over here, here this, this whoops, I knew it was going to happen at some point. <laughs> right. Yes. This gentleman right here is Chaz Moore. Yes. Um, and Chaz Moore is the uh, leader of the Austin Justice Coalition. And uh, AJC is involved in every issue that comes to civil and human rights in the city. And he was also involved with the uh, painting of Black Austin Matters. And I have known Chaz in passing. We, we, you know, because you just get involved in things, he's always present, he's always there. We're like, let's talk to this brother. Let's, let's, let's find out about him. And the great thing about podcasting and sitting with folks is that we ask questions about the work they do and their commitments. We talk about sneakers. Yeah. We talk about hip hop. TV shows. TV shows. What is Frazier? Frazier, Frazier Watcher. And, and I, I think, think people will look at Chaz, Chaz and say, oh, well, Chaz, Chaz is so serious, and, and he's, he's a serious guy, guy no doubt, but he's, he's a funny guy, guy too. Yeah. And in the podcast, we have the format to actually get into the stories and have people tell us about who they actually are. So, so some people, they see Chaz Moore, and he's talking about an issue of great importance, and they're like, oh, that guy's been talking about that all the time. He got very vulnerable with us. In fact, all of our participants in our study, I mean, our, our podcast do that. We, we, we're able to get them to just open up and talk about their lives. And it's, it's so great because we always find connections, right? Yeah. Or differences, like, wow, that's a different vibe. But ultimately, uh, you'll hear us on the podcast, we laugh, uh, you know, we giggle, we talk over each other sometimes because it's so exciting. But that's what's so great about this format. And for somebody who listens to the podcast myself, I see, well, you have to be very polished and have your notes. And we have fantastic support, and I'll talk about it a little bit later on. But a lot of it's about the spontaneity and just sort of Go into the vibe that's in the space. You know, we're talking about what just happened. I mean, I know. Look, Saturday, tough, tough day for us here in Austin. Our Walmart did a great job, though. Yes. Present. But we'll talk about something like that, and that'll start in the direction of a conversation. Yeah. And that's what the, to me, the fun of this format is: is that you know we don't have a script. We have a sort of a guidepost where we want to go, but it really will be up to our our guests to help us. Had that conversation. Yeah. It was, it, it's also, we were professors by day, right? So there's a lot of academic articles we write, lectures, conferences. This is a whole different vibe where we get to um, just hang out with people that are from all walks of life. And in fact, when I talk to people about the podcast, they always say, Our favorite episode, yeah, you did this person that was high flu and this man. But Joe the Barber. Joe. Joe Barber Jr. Everybody loves to talk about. Um, and he is a philosopher, though, too. He's, He's a brilliant, brilliant man. And, and what this show is meant to do is to kind of dismantle our ideas about who should be listened to, who's important enough to be uh, archived to represent the, 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 the community. And someone who has a PhD but doesn't always share that with people all the time, I think that 
important because I, I, my parents didn't have PhDs. I don't want to be in any situation where their knowledge is not valued, that their um, education uh, is something that we use to keep them out of the conversation and out of being part of the community. Yeah. That makes no sense. It makes total sense. I'm a first generation collegian. My parents live here in Austin. They were here on Fridays, as a matter of fact. My parents come to campus like maybe once a year. And they still do what I do, right? They're like, the professor teaching part we understand, but why are you always in the office? Or why are you working in July? You're off right? in the summer. Right. <laughs> we hate that. Right. <laughs> but um, I, that's exactly right. I wanted my folks to be able to tune in, listen to the show, and just, you know, see themselves or see other people. We, we intentionally did not go and talk to all the big names, even though the folks up here, you know, have done quite impressive things. But we've talked to people who are kind of under the radar as well, people who are doing work in the community that don't necessarily have a street name after them or right. that kind of thing. And, and to me, that was the most exciting piece because, as Lisa said earlier, it's about your neighbors. And, you know, you're walking down the street and you have no idea this person has the knowledge they have, the experiences they have, that kind of thing. And, and just to sort of recap about working with Joe, Joe Harper Jr. is my, is my barber. Uh, and, and now my son's barber. And now Penny's barber. <laughs> and those of you who have been in black barber shops, and I know this is what we call barbershop, okay, so you might know about that. <laughs> or salons, you know that that's a community hub, right? Things just happen and there's conversations. And a barber has to be able to be conversant in a lot of things. Politics, sports, uh, social issues, what have you. And the deafness and how Joe was able to kind of talk about, you know, cutting heads and then talk about Ukraine. And it was just like and real estate. And real estate. I mean, where do you like? Oh, write this down. Yeah, it was that kind of stuff. So, just a really amazing thing. So here's another group of pictures. Now, this picture right over here. Yeah. Um, I was rocking out before on the drums, getting a little bit of abuse in myself. So I was having the drums. But um, that in the middle is uh, Dr. Uh, Colette Pierce Burnett, who is the former president of Houston Tilton University. She was the first woman president of that institution. And by the way, let me ask this question. We'll do a little call and response. Can anybody tell me the name of the first university established in Austin? <laughs> was it Miles? It was Texas. Was that our producer? It was Miles. There's, 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 I see right there. Houston Tilton University, University established in 1876. UT was established in 1883. So they're our big sister or big brother, how you want to call it. But um, big sibling, big sibling. Yes, they will be inclusive. <laughs> and uh, I called the sister president, and she came out, had a busy day, got dropped off by somebody, and just sat there and had the most amazing interview. And I'll tell you about that interview day. That's the day I found out I was going to be appointed a senior vice provost in dean of undergraduate studies. And in that discussion, she was dropping knowledge about being true to yourself, mm -hmm. having confidence not being able, afraid to say no to things. And I was just like, I can't tell you anything right now, but today of all days, that <laughs> message, it hit, it hit. So that was a great interview. Absolutely. Well, speaking, of, speaking of Miles, um, so our, we wouldn't be able to do anything without this amazing team of folks. We didn't mention Matt Margie earlier, who's our um, producer, our other producer, uh, is Miles Blossom, who is in, in the house tonight. Woo! And <laughs> keeps us on track because we're, you know, we're kind of, you know, uh, with the mom, as as you can see. the mom would say, you guys are your characters, you two. <laughs> um, and she also takes what we come up with and then puts it in the right order so that we can have um, orderly and concise and targeted narratives in our um, podcast. But she also is encouraging. Um, again, we're stepping outside of our comfort zones, right? We're just being experts, and it's, it's, it's a moment with someone who's gentle with you to, to guide you where you need to be. She's able to direct us in how to, um, to, to give, I guess, suit your dialogue in between <laughs> different scenes that we need to, or different um, parts of the, of, of the show, and just makes us feel like this adventure was not for not, I guess. Do it again. One more time. Do it again. One more time. That was good. We're good. Just for safety. <laughs> <laughs> One more. And it's, it, it truly is great because I think we are heralded as experts so often. It's nice to be in the learning mode. And I think it's important for you to think about as first year students to always be in that mode of receiving and learning. You're never too advanced or too knowledgeable or too above 
that, to, to be directed or to be coached or to be supported or mentored. And I actually consider Miles a mentor because uh, she really is teaching me something about, you know, how to do this work. And, and she also tells us, like, you guys are getting better at this. And I'm like, wow. I, right. <laughs> but people tell us that, too. People are like, yo, that last year y'all did was hot. And I'm like, oh, we've been, we've been mentored and coached. So one of the great things about this is like, we put this together and we're like, what's gonna happen? Who's gonna be interested in this? A lot of people. And we just started getting, first of all, social media mentions. And then all of a sudden there was this whole, sort of the community was really interested in this. And so we wanna show you a quick clip uh, from one of the interviews we did with our good friend Trevor over at uh, KI, which is Channel 42 here in Austin. And we talked about the show. So we're gonna talk a little bit about how the show gets started, and you'll get to hear that kind of thing. So just uh, take a look, and let's pray that it works properly. So when people download, and you will, I know you're going to want to, this podcast or subscribe, uh, what will they expect to hear? It's a great question. Expect to hear from your neighbors, mm. from the other people that live in the city and, you know, the greater Austin area, and hear about their experiences, what they like and don't like. It's, it's definitely um, not about... Um, racism and the problems of, of, of black people, but it really is about, um, we touch on those issues as part of black life, but we touch on black joy and black, just the, the every day. Um, and also we debate our favorite barbecue place as well. <laughs> important, 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 important things. We care about these things. So the other thing I think was amazing is that once we had this sort of media sort of interest, it grew. And you can see up there a number of uh, national and local um, media outlets wanted to cover our story. And it made us realize that it was bigger than us, and the people were interested in black Austin. People were hearing about Austin all the time. And Austin gets a lot of national coverage. And but really it is about what's going on for black folks besides they're disappearing from Austin. So it's nice to kind of change that narrative, or expand it, I should say. Not necessarily like change, but expand it to something, to something else. People don't know who, who are the people you're concerned about disappearing. And it makes, it makes a, a very, it's a big difference to know who your neighbors are. So you, you have a little different kind of sense of concern. So it was nice to be able to talk to all these different folks and share our origin story, but also what we want to see happen in the future. And you know what blew my mind, Lisa, is that when we had friends across the country uh, in New York and Philadelphia and West Coast, North Carolina, listening in. I'm like, y'all live in Austin. And they're like, no, no, we, we want to hear about community. And then we even heard people saying, I want to do a Black Austin Matters thing in my community. And we're like, that's amazing. And in fact, um, I, have a good friend, I have some friends in Asheville, North Carolina, who had a sort of uh, show on their NPR station. I kind of think about them all the time as sort of planning those ideas. Like, you know, you can have a conversation about your community and you could be a massive city like Austin is, I guess. We're kind of between a small town because Austin's like old school, Austin's like a small town, yeah. and a big city, right? Yeah. Or you could be in Chicago, or you could be in Des Plaines. You could be anywhere and, and think about how to bring your community's uh, stories to light. And certainly, I'm also really happy because people have often ask us, well, who is this for? And we say it's for everybody, right? This is especially a love letter to Black Austin. But it's really for everybody. We want people to listen. So we'll have people from all kinds of backgrounds and all kinds of identities saying, I love the podcast. And that's, I still can't get over that. When people are like, I heard you across the hallway and I knew it was your voice. Oh I'm like, me? Oh my God, okay. So I'm with my son, um, North East Austin, who went to the library because nerd, yes. Um, so we're walking and somebody says, are you on the pod on the podcast? Um, about blackness, yes. So that was when I went to a restaurant one day, and this really young, cool, hip person, like younger than me, much younger, she's like, girl, are you podcast Lisa? I said, yes! Podcast Lisa. <laughs> so it's been wonderful to be embraced by folks from all ages and races, and all types of um, affinity points, and it's been wonderful to, to be in communication with, with our community. And also to see some people that um, are kind of surprised and learning begrudgingly about Black Austin, and it's been nice to be able to do that too. Yeah, the subscribers are something else, because people are like, yo, you know, I listen to, you know, All Things Considered, and I listen to, you know, Pot City America, and I listen to Black Austin Matters. 
And, and we, we even got a shout out on one of these. I don't know if it was one of these, but you know, like the five top podcasts. Yeah, that was in there. I'm like, us? Yeah. Thank you so much. So, so I guess what I want to share with, it, with, with all of you is think about what matters to you. Yeah. What do you want to say to claim and insight? I want to um, shed science and light on this part of my community, shine this light on this, this part of this, this, this issue. You have a lot of power, and you are by all means by helping you to do all the technological parts of this. And think about the power you have to change the narrative, to expand the narrative, to change history, or at least record history. So I really encourage you to do that, especially for this next um, four years. How you want to document your time here in Austin? Yeah, I, I totally agree. So. Dr. Constant mentioned the idea of what technology, and you know, so I'm on Twitter doing Twitter things, you know, she's on Insta doing Insta things, we don't know anything about TikTok, but we had an opportunity to try to do these things. So this is, again, a project that some of the folks in the Moody College Communication, Moody yeah. House, is Moody at? Moody, yeah. All right, so y'all have some very talented folks you work with. So they put together this little TikTok video for, so we got to see, check it out. Professor Lisa B. Thompson. And I'm Professor Richard J. Reddick. We're the co-hosts of Black Ops to the Matters. I think it's a great tool, not the only one. And I think this is one that I think will confuse people across the city. Um, I think that radio, in many ways, now that the podcasts that are available everywhere, it's really a democratizing kind of way of communicating with people. And I think it also it's, um, centers the black voice in the radio in our city and that really hasn't been done and it's not set up in a way that's only because an episode happened that people are concerned about but it actually we want to weave black life black culture black folks in austin into the every aspect of the city yeah we've had a really good time working with ktx or kt studios and i think also the fact that we are both npr Pointing yeah. from NPR, and it's like just the idea. And again, this is Lisa's genius because she was like, We should do this not just one time, but do it episodically. So we're excited about being something that's kind of a permanent uh, sort of voice of the experience of the folks in Austin. Many things. One of them is to get um, tips on where the best barbecue is. <laughs> but honestly, to change the conversation, there's a lot of conversation about. Black Austin is disappearing, and we want to make sure that folks know who, who is Black Austin before we start talking about the demise. Um, it's really important for us to make sure that Black Austin is at the center of its own discussion and description of itself. The biggest thing I learned was that this was so needed in the city, and that we were actually creating an archive snapshot of this moment in time for the city. It's me to the mention now. So you know somebody because they been involved in an activity or they lead a group of some kind. Then you find out they like to do some music. They like to do this kind of thing on the show. And it's funny and it's exciting and it's sometimes sad, but I just think it's a full picture of folks, which is always fun because we get to know people in their full capacity. Bye. <laughs> Subscribe. Look, look at us. And look, look at this, this whole, what is it, what do we call it, the wall of, of our, in, many of our in, uh, folks we've interviewed from um, optometrist to a educator, a uh, barber, and a visual artist, and a musician, and um, community activist. Yeah, and the great thing about the the stuff that we do in social is that we try to capture people in their elements. So yeah, we got to go there. If you listen to, for instance, Joe's uh, episode, there's actually audio from him, you know, in the barbershop. So you get to hear what it's like where they work. Um, and you know, we mentioned that we were both KUT and NPR junkies. And you know, honestly, you move to Austin, you're new to Austin, 90.5, tune in, listen, and just learn about the community because you'll hear people talking about things that are happening in the community, people who've been in for a long time, people who've moved here recently. It really is a, communi a community convening place. Absolutely. On the airwaves. And it's very informational. I mean, especially I would shout out to um, Disconnect, this wonderful podcast about yeah. what happened with 
but the power going out in uh, in Texas is really award winning and yeah. very informative. We got Paul's play about the awesome music scene, which is also interesting. And Paul's Zeus by my ass. <laughs> and like, actually, she is actually yeah. the, uh, the 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 uh, what do you call it? The MC. MC or, or host. Co-host. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and, and then, then of course, there's ATX Explain. I love ATX Explain. Matt Largy is yeah. all with that. And, and that's, that's like a lot of things about how did Austin get this? Why is Koenig Road 2222-22 and God. Allendale God. the same road? Stuff, Stuff like that. that. And y'all are like, what are you talking about? Go you'll find you'll out. You'll find out. It's one road, 18 names. So, so we were talking about the team, team and we already, already mentioned uh, Matt. Matt. We mentioned Miles right over there. Antoinette. And so has been amazing. Uh, she does our research and makes sure that we understand our subjects. Because we go into an interview, we want to make sure we know who we're talking to, something about their background, their identity. And that's a lot of like looking interviews, looking at social media, if they talk to people in other places. So we want to walk in prepared and know something about uh, people we're interviewing. We're not just like, hey, so what's your name again? You know, like we, we want to actually act like we have some kind of knowledge. And so we actually spend a lot of time researching our subjects so we can walk in and have, hey, you've done some really interesting things in the community. I heard that you helped raise money for folks during the pandemic who were artists, for instance. That kind of stuff has been really helpful. And it's often a great springboard for them to talk about a story that we may not heard. And sometimes you think, like, oh, that's not the most exciting thing. It's this. And they want to talk about that one thing that sounds very inconsequential. But they're like, that's the most important thing I do. I love doing that work. Or I love the fact that you knew that I, would, I was involved in that particular activity. So research, research, is, research is key. And our first researcher actually was an uh, undergraduate here at UT, Rachel Dunkley. So shout out to her um, for getting us going with our first interviews. I'll make sure I, I make Antoinette's name. Antoinette Masato. And, um, and she is just an amazing detective. And this is another awesome thing to think about. When you're in your signature courses thinking about Learning how to do research, right? Learning how to find the right sources. Some sources are more reliable than others, right? Yeah. So um, sometimes you have to triangulate and say, okay, I read one place that this person was involved in this. Let me see if I can triangulate and find it somewhere else. So um, it is interesting that, that the same skills you're learning in signature courses, you will be, we use that in our work as well. You know, uh, public presentations, you know, doing things together. And in fact, it's such an interesting thing for us We've decided to do a signature course in fall of 2023 on Black Austin Matters. So you're already a signature course right now. Yes. Yes, yes. Thank you. So tell all your friends coming in UT27. Yeah. Wow. Uh, class of 27. I don't want to think about it. <laughs> when they come in 27, tell them to take Black Austin Matters. And some of your friends who aren't taking signature courses, take it with us. And we're just going to have so much fun with that. I think just exposing, uh, you know, young folks to... Uh, you know, the idea of podcasting, casting a vision. And one thing I didn't say, but I want to say sort of about skills behind this, is the skill and the importance of collaboration. And I just want to put my hand here to my good friend here because, my goodness, we, we, oh my God, tag team, tag team, tag team. wonderful tag team. You know? There it is. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the thing about, a lot of times, I think it's because we both have lots of similarities, but lots of differences at the same time. At least like, that's not it. That's, that's not, not it. it. I'm like, I think it's okay. It's like, nah, that's not it. And then I find out he's right. That's right. Like, that's the worst well, it goes both <laughs> ways, right? But honestly, one thing I've learned in this process, I always consider myself a serial collaborator. And the fact that, you know, you got a black man and a black woman, you know, West Coast, you know, from everywhere. <laughs> so all those different things about us really sort of make a, a cohesive sort of team that comes together. And we really depend on each other and Antoinette. And, and Miles and, and Matt, just to sort of like, does this sound right to y'all? And it's a great sounding board. Because everybody feels really comfortable saying, yes. I don't know if that's the best way to go about this. Try it this way. Right. Or that's, I know when people like it, when our team likes it, it's hot. I know it. Because there's nobody sitting there like, it's nice, but you know, it sucks. Right. It's happen. It's nice to feel safe and feel understood and to feel, you can be vulnerable and you can grow in it. Up in a situation where you, there's trust there and mutual respect. And, and definitely trust yourselves when you're making these kind of uh, connections and collaborations. If you feel when you're engaging with somebody, you're, you're feeling your body going like this, leaning into it, trust that. Yeah. And also trust when you feel your body, when you're on your heels with somebody you're dealing with and how they speak to you or how you guys engage, trust that too. 
and it may be a bad person, it makes you snap, it may be a fit, but lean into the, the people that make you feel like you can be a genius, like you can change the world, like you can contribute something to your, to your city. Yeah, and I think the thing that we also really embrace in this work is intersectionality. So the fact that we have talked to black men, black women, black queer folks, uh, non-binary folks, non-binary folks. We just had this great exchange. People who are low income, people who are middle income. You know, really understanding that we are more than a single story. You know, there's that really famous TED talk, uh, the nature of a single yeah. story. And there's just multiple stories to be told. And the minute you think you understand the community completely, we're going to bring you somebody you're like, wow, that's a completely different experience than the other person you talked about. And we're still growing in that space. Like, every time we get together, it's like a challenge to think, like, how, who have we not spoken to yet? And can we move outside of our comfort zones? Because we started with people we knew or people we had connections to, to people we don't know, we just heard about, or we know they're doing work that's important or we know that they, they matter in our community and we want to talk to them. That's been a lot of fun, too. Yeah. Just decentering us, uh, you know, yes. professors will talk. Like, no, y'all talk, and let's just ask questions. And also, we get a lot of recommendations from the community. Lots. A lot. Lots. <laughs> Lots. He's talking to someone for that. He, he, his cousin, yes. he's been, he's been here, here since, what year was that? Oh, year yeah. He was back here today. But, but, but those are the folks we were like, yes, make that's on the list. And it's really important to me to make this, although we're doing this work, it is for the community, and we want to get the community feedback. We, have, we keep a list of the folks suggest to us. And it's really for you. I mean, because I think one thing I want you to think about, um, if there's any advice to be given, is that if you have an idea to pursue it, and I think what you said, Lisa, was exactly right. Like, you know, um, I didn't know what we were going to do. I didn't, I didn't know we were going to have a conversation. It was going to be like, yeah, that's not it. And it took a year, so it was like, maybe this is not going to come together as you thought it was going to come together. But honestly, it was just having sort of faith in each other and using each other's sounding boards. But then also knowing that people wanted us. I really, I felt that the Delcos deserved oh, to get that story up there. Absolutely. And we were just like, hey, whatever it takes is going to happen. And we had all the assistance we needed to make that happen. But I just really think that your passion, whatever it is, you might know what it is right now, and you might be still trying to find it, and you don't have to find it today or next year or in the next four years even, but be in pursuit of it and know it's out there some way, and know that it might just kind of pop up kind of randomly. Uh, it could be a tweet. It could be a good friend saying to you, let's get together and do something. And I'll tell you, when I sat down with the provost, who's my boss, and said, you know, you have this job. Here it is. And I'm like, I've got one request. I gotta keep podcasting with Lisa. And, and that was really amazing. And she said yes. And, and it kind of sits really nicely because tomorrow we're gonna have two other professor podcasters on, yeah. uh, which is a lot of fun. So um, they, did, they did it first. They were, they were before us. Several role models. Yeah, no, 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 like, <laughs> wouldn't be like that. A little different, but something like that. But anyway, that's how we got started. So up here, you got our beautiful logo created by my boy Marcus Wesson, my classmate, my best friend who made our logo for us. Amazing. There's a team, there's Miles, there's me looking fly, there's, <laughs> there's Matt, and Lisa's always looking fly, of course. It was, it was a little cold that day, can you tell? Yeah, yeah, yeah. can you believe it? Actually, it was cold here one time. And right there is a QR code, if you hit it, it'll take you to, to my KUTX DJ session we did. Yes, we DJed a session where we got into the studio and selected songs and talked about them and it, 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 can we say it slaps? It, 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 it did slap. indeed slap. <laughs> and even my kids thought it was cool. Yes. Is that you on the radio? It was so, it was so much fun. So, uh, I think you've heard that Shonda Rhimes is a thing about a year of yes. And I, I, I kind of been on that journey. But I didn't realize that she had a whole team of people that helped her year of yes. But anyway, it's another, it's another thing. But I do encourage you to say yes to things that will ch challenge you and scare you. Um, to never, never feel like you figured it all out. And also trust that little voice in your head mm. when you're like, I want to do this, but I'm scared. Just go ahead and leave. It'll be okay. I promise it will be okay. It'll be magical, baby. That's this voice for us. Yeah. Thank you all so much for listening to us. I want to make one, I want to make one last point. Time is, <laughs> you can't stop us from talking. <laughs> but anyway, um, so on the um, My KTX playlist, you got some old school, you got some newer stuff, but there was a song that was on there, Leon Bridges, Text the Sun. Uh, and we hear Dr. Hobson talk about why she chose that song. And I was actually driving to Lufkin that day. 
And when I heard the song come on, I'm like, like man, man, this, this is, is just the moment, moment right? right? Yes. And, and then, then a few, few months, months later, President Hartzell invites us to go to Leon Bridges' concert. And we're sitting there vibing. Go to Moody and check the things out. And we're listening to Texas Sun played by Leon Bridges. Like, we got you, Leon. So that was a vibe. So anyway, thank you all so much. Um, come back tomorrow for our good friends uh, who do Two Guys in Your Head. And pursue your dreams. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. We did it. We did it, Joe. We did it, Joe. <laughs> Thank you all. Thank you. Well, thank you, Dr. Raddick and Dr. Thompson. I know I speak for everyone here when I say how important this work is and how fortunate that all of us here in Austin are to have you as UT faculty member. And so now we come to the end, but before you go, I want one round of applause for the Herbert family for sponsoring this event. Herbert family. And again, send in your questions. We'll get to them. <laughs> Thank you for being here tonight, and as always, welcome, Warren. Welcome. Thank you.